ourselves. Okay, Ish Sader, the word Sader is talking about a field of consciousness. Okay, and we're talking about the field of consciousness. I mean, Yitzhak also knew what the Sader was. He'd been in that Sader when he went to make the Mincha prayer. But, but when Yitzhak says, okay, Daddy, I'm going off to the Sader, uh, he, he, uh, Yitzhak thought he was going to pray, like he went to pray. No idea that Asaph was actually going to this, this field of consciousness to actually pull towards him this great light of God in an illegitimate way. The Yaakov Ishtam Yosheva Halim. But Yaakov was a whole man, whole with God, whole with himself, okay, sitting in the tents. And the Zohar goes into this into a lot of detail as we've learnt, and we looked um, in detail at the um, nature of Yaakov and Esau, and we uh, looked at it in our chart, okay, and we saw how um, Esau has the vessels for the purpose of creation, he's got these very big vessels, but he's actually using them for the Yetzer, the, in the service of the Yetzirah, whereas Yaakov starts off only with the vessels from the framework of holiness, okay, um, like Avraham. He starts off more like Avraham. Okay. Now, the half Yitzhak had Esau. And Isaac loved Esau. Why? Well, he's got similar vessels. Yitzhak has also got these huge vessels of receiving the light of God. These are the great vessels of the purpose of creation. Okay. And with which we can eventually receive all the great blessings at the Gemara Tikkun. All right. Um, but Yitzhak only uses them in Kedusha. And he has no idea that Esau is actually using them in, in, in Tum'ah. But he loves Esau in the sense that there is affinity with them. They, they recognize each other as having the same vessel, the same potential. And Esau did have potential for Kedusha. In, uh, his head aspect, the Zohar says, was in holiness. Just what he was doing with it, but in practice, uh, was not. Okay. Rivka hevetit Yaakov, and Rivka loves Yaakov. Okay, she's got affinity with Yaakov. Vayisad Yaakov nazid v'avo esav min asadev u'ayev. And it was on the day when uh, Avraham Avinu died, um, and it was uh, uh, lentils is the uh, uh, food of mourning, and Yaakov is making lentil stew. <coughs> Okay, and Aesop comes in from the field and he is exhausted. And Yaakov is making this lentil stew, okay, and the Zohar asked, why is it Yaakov making the lentil stew? Why isn't it Yitzhak making the lentil stew? Yitzhak was the mourner, mm -hmm. okay? He should be making the lentil stew. But Except Yaakov Yitzhak was making... blind. Hmm? Except he's blind. Not yet, yeah. I don't think. Yeah. Not, not happened yet. Um, uh, um, I think it was more, the Zohar at least says, it was because the lentil stew is red and he wanted to attract Esau with this redness and subdue him with this redness. Okay. And Yaakov is making this lentil stew and Esau comes in from the field and he's exhausted. And the Zohar asks, what was he doing in the field? What was he doing out there? And this was the time when he went out and he met Nimrod in the field and he murdered Nimrod and he took the clothes. And the clothes that he took were the clothes that originally belonged to Adama Rishon. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was the vessels of Adama Rishon, which God had given Adama Rishon. And he took them for himself. And these are the clothes that Adam Rishon was using. And when he used them, all the spiritual and physical animals would just you fall see? down and... Um, uh, yeah, and, 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 and give themselves to him. Okay. And we looked at this last week and we said, you know, well, what was this, what is this Seda? What is this, what is this hunting that he was doing? And Rabbi Zohar, Rabbi Ashag in the Perush Sulam likens it to Shechita. He says, when we do Shechita for an animal, when we kill an animal, we're only allowed to take the, the meat, but the life force of the animal, we, we, they pour on the ground and we don't take the life force. 
And what Aesop and Nimrod were doing was more like Abraham and Hachai, which is to actually take the life from the animal, try to take the life force with, with that as well. It's absolutely disgusting. And that's absolutely tarif. Okay. Mm. And, um, and this is what in, 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 in spiritual vessels, not just in physical vessels, which is you know, even more awful. So know? ayef, one second, I, I, uh, ayef means that uh, the, the, the Zohar looks at uh, how do they know that ayef means that he was murdering. It was because ayef lahogim is from a, a, um, a, a verse in uh, Jeremiah. Um, and which he says, uh, as he's ayef lahogim in one place, so ayef means hogim in another place. Hmm. And from this we learn that he was ayef because he was busy killing Nimrod. He was tired, ayef. Oh, thank you. And Esau says to Yaakov, give me please from this very red stuff. Ki ayef anochi. Now, what's happening here? What is happening here? He says, why is he wanting this, this red stuff? This adoma, doma zeh. Okay, what is it? He's, there's something that's attracting him to, to, the, um, to, this, to this stuff. And um, we get, understand it a little bit from the next bit. Vayama Yaakov micha kayom et birchot chali. And Yaakov says to him, sell me this day your birthright. Now, on the first face of this, this looks to us rather horrific. You know, here's this guy who's just going to die. You know, I'm, I'm so, you know. Uh, um, uh, and Esau said, look, I'm going to die. What do I need the Bechorah for? And Yaakov says to him, swear to me today. And he swore to him, Vim koet Bechorah to Yaakov. And he sold his birthright to Yaakov. Yaakov natan la Esav lechem unazid adashim v'yochal v'yesht v'yakom v'yelach v'yevez Esav et b'chora. And Yaakov said, swear to me today. And he swore to him and he sold his birthright to Yaakov. And Yaakov gave Esav bread and stew and lentil stew. And he ate and he drank and he got up and he went. And Esav despised the birthright. Now... What is Ayakov actually doing here? And we learn this from the Se'il Azazel, which comes up in another place in this whole story. Okay, and the, what's he actually doing? He's actually appeasing Esav with something lesser in, in order to allow Esav to let go of something bigger. Esav didn't want the birthright. The birthright is not tents and camels and stuff like that. The birthright is faith in God. And he didn't want it. It was not what he wanted. He despised it. He said, what do I need this for? It's killing me. I want to go the way of Nimrod. And this conflict is killing me. He didn't want it. He wanted to, to let it go. He didn't feel it was good for him. Okay. What good is this birthright? Because the birthright is about giving. And Esau was all about receiving. And he didn't want to be giving. He just wanted to be receiving. So if he's going to be forced to give, he didn't want it. Okay, so what good is it to me? I can't receive anything from this. So, does yeah. it include the Kalim as well? What? Yes, he wants okay. it. Well, interesting question, Yochavet. Does it include the Kalim? I uh, know, I don't think it does in a way because you can't give away your vessels okay. in a way. You can only just stop using them. So, I don't mm. really know. Yeah, okay. That's a very good question. Excellent question. He sold him anyhow the rights to it. Does he, did he sell the Kalim? That's a fascinating question. I have no idea. Very interesting. And Esau said to him, I'm going to die. He's, it's only use, he's selling the rights to it. Uh, anyhow, he's, he's appeasing it. And he says, well, look, if you eat this Adom, Adom is there, you know. So he sold his birthright for some lentil stew. I mean, when you think about it, I mean, I'm sure he could have held out a bit longer if he needed to. We can all hold out longer than we think we can. I mean, you know, I, I, I can think of stories from the Holocaust where people held out in order to wash their hands in a puddle. And there's a, a, a story which I've never forgotten. It's a true story of a, of a Hasid, and he's in the Holocaust. He's a young man, and um, he's so starving. He is starving, more than starving. 
Okay, he's beyond starving. And finally, he just, they're on this death march, and he finally said, yeah, I can't do it any longer. And he goes over to these Nazis, and he just put, throws his, basically, you know, it's equivalent to basically throwing your life away. He says, I can't go on, I need some bread. And they gave him this piece of bread. Okay? For one time, he wasn't murdered. He gave him a piece of bread. He could easily have been murdered for that. And he's walking along with his bread in his pocket, and he doesn't eat it. Why doesn't he eat it? He's waiting to get to a puddle so he can do nitilat yadayim. Mm. Like, it's like not believable. And when he finally manages to find a puddle so he can do nitilat yadayim, puts his hand to his pocket, and the bread is gone. Why? Why? Bread is gone. How is it going? Uh, anyhow, he, this guy eventually survived and he got to, uh, mm. uh, uh, he became a Rav of a kibbutz here in Israel. Mm. Uh, and, it's, and it's a true story, uh, uh, I don't remember the name of the kibbutz, a religious kibbutz here in Israel became, became a Rav of this kibbutz. Mm. You know the name of and, and, and one Do time, you know the name? Mm? Do you know his name? I can look it up, I've got the book on. And, um, and uh, what happened was, 20, 30 years later, this guy comes up to him and says, please forgive me. It was me who stopped. And, and, he, and he said, I forgave you the moment I realized it was gone. I knew it could only have been another Jew who was in as desperate a state as I was in. So the thing is, why am I bringing the story now is that the fact that the Torah tells us that Esau despised the birthright is truly true. He did not need to eat the lentil stew, however, however awful he was feeling. Okay, he could have gone that one extra mile if he needed to. Okay, if if you know, it's just it's an incredible story, and it really illustrates to us that that Esau sold the birthright in full awareness of what he was doing because he despised it, because he didn't want it. And he takes in exchange some stew. And that's why the descendants of Esau, the Zohar tells us, this is why the descendants of Esau are, not, are actually called Edom, Edomites. Mm -hmm. Because it's like Yaakov gave him the name following the, the name of the stew. Okay. Is, is Vayibez? Vayibez, he despised. Is despise or means to like spin on, you know, denigrate? Same yeah. thing, despised it, yeah. No, it's a, it's a degree of feelings. It's, a, it's a, like to not have some, so much respect for it, to not, you know, to like look down upon it is one thing. To hate it is something else. I think he really hated it from what I'm understanding. Yeah. Like he really, 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 really didn't want it. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. But okay. I have a question because <clears throat> I'm wondering if... You say that Esav, Esav could have held out, <clears throat> and I'm wondering whether Esav really knew that he was going to die based on what he had just finished doing. And Yaakov, actually, it wasn't just a question of lentil stew, it was a question of an extension of life. Yes. That he gave him, so that that is the only reason the Edomites continued, is because Yaakov had the chesed to save them. Whereas otherwise, Esav might have just dropped dead on the spot if he hadn't eaten. That's you understand what I? Yes, you, yes. You understand? I, yeah, I think yes. there's more going on there. There's, I think you're right, Yochaved, and the Zohar does seem to hint in that direction. That that there's a very beautiful idea that that that, that not only that that uh, Vayamot could be that he was going to physically die, but it's that he's is totally separated from God. He's totally separated at this moment. From his uh, uh, life source. Exactly. Absolutely. And Yaakov is like giving him back something. He's actually reviving him in a way. Yes. And there's a way. You're right. And that's a chesed from Yaakov. Yaakov is actually reviving him by giving him back some life force. Yes. And he's also protecting the birthright at the same time. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. You know, whereas who knows what direction it would have gone if... Esav had just held on, held on to it. <laughs> All right. So absolutely. Yeah, that's beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Yochavid. Very nice. Yeah, very, very, very good. Absolutely. Right. 
Now that is more or less the story of, 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 the, of, the, of Esau and Yaakov at this point. Then the narrative breaks off, the Torah narrative breaks off and we go with Yitzhak to digging wells, which I have to tell you is a fascinating piece of Zohar, but we, you know, we'll have to do that another time, okay? And then we're coming back now to the story <coughs> of Yaakov and Esau, and, this, and the Torah takes up the story again in chapter 27, okay? And this is the, the piece that we're really, you know, working, going to be working on for the next, uh, this week and the next uh, 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 four, uh, uh, four weeks. Okay, verse one. And Isaac was old, and his eyes got dark from seeing, uh, dimmed from seeing. Be kite ye sub benogodol, and he calls to Asaf his oldest son, Vyome Elav, and he says to him, Bene, my son, Vyome Elav, and he says to him, Hineni. Uh, you know, Hineni. You always know something drastic is going to happen when you have the word Hineni in the Torah. What is the name? Okay. So, here I am. So, uh, Yitzhak is old and his eyes were dimmed from seeing. Now, we went into this in quite a lot of detail, that the, the darkness that Yitzhak took inside of himself. <coughs> These blessings that we're going to spend a lot of time on are the blessings for the Gemara Tikkun. Now, if we look at our chart, what we looked at from the very first lesson was that the purpose of creation, the Eitz of Baruchu, the will to give goodness to all created beings, creates the vessel for receiving all God's goodness. Okay? Okay? And this creation, this will to receive, is a necessary element of creation without which... God's light can't come into expression into, into the world. <coughs> and we find that this vessel of giving, of receiving, actually goes into two, two directions. One is the will to receive all that God wants to give us for ourselves alone. It becomes the framework of evil. And the will to give, or, if we're, or just receiving for the sake of giving to God, in order to, to give to God the happiness that he can give to us, is the framework of holiness. And we find that how this evolves is that Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden were born originally, or created originally, so it's more accurate, in um, the framework of holiness, just with the giving. But when they eat from the tree of knowledge by enticement of the snake, okay, they take into themselves the framework of evil. So now we have man, the human being, who has within himself <coughs> both the framework of holiness and the framework of evil. Both of us with, within ourselves. We have both the Yetzir HaTov and the Yetzir Hara, Okay, And in fact, God intended this to happen. There were no mistakes in the Garden of Eden. All right? Okay. Now, the main people in our story, in, 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 our, in our involvement, our fathers, Avraham is only the framework of holiness. He's got the vessels of chesed, of giving. Yitzhak has the main vessels of receiving, and he uses them only for the sake of giving. Now, in order to actually uh, be able to pass on the blessings which are going to uh, enshrine the final way in which the purpose of creation is going to come about, okay, this is what the meaning of the blessings are, it's a very huge thing. These are going to ensure the fulfillment of the purpose of creation, these blessings. He has to take into himself that huge vessel to its ut uttermost end, okay, that huge vessel of receiving and rectify it only for the sake of giving. So this is the meaning of his darkness, because the dark light, the God's light is never dark, but it can seem dark to us when we're not in the place of giving, when we don't accept it. There's a level, it's actually in the sphere of Bina, okay, where we, where, and God calls the darkness night, okay, mm -hmm. and it's, from God's perspective, it's all light, but from our perspective, it seems dark until we rectify it for the sake of giving 
and then that becomes day also. And that's the meaning of shacharit, the, 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 the morning prayer. It's got, go, we go from shachor and we daven and we give and it becomes shacharit, okay? It's and the dark like becomes dawn. Hmm? Kind of like Hanukkah. Um, is it like the Hanukkah? The darkness. It, it's, it, it, it's, there's something there, but let's go to Hanukkah at the end, okay? Because, yeah, okay, you're not wrong, okay? <laughs> Very nice. Thank God for that. Okay. Between, between right. darkness. Yes, but it's a little bit more than Hanukkah, in a sense. Hanukkah, do, do, we'll talk about that at the end, okay? Because we can, you know, too easy to, to diverge okay. here. So, Vatika Hanna a, a, a Nav, and his eyes got dark. He took within himself this huge um, ve uh, vessels of creation, okay? He cried to and and once he's complete within him, he calls Esau his, his oldest son, and he says to him, Bani, my son, Vayome love Hineni, and he says to him, Here am I, Vyome Hinena Zakanti, I've got old. Okay. Valoya Dati Yomoti. Maybe you know, the Zohar doesn't say so so explicitly, but maybe he because he's complete in these vessels, he knows that he's um uh, he he knows the time has come to do to, to do the blessings. Vatan Sana Kelecha and now take up your bow and your arrow, the kashtaha, sorry, your oh your whatever, your, your vessels, your bow and your arrow, the ter sadeh, and go out to this field of consciousness, okay? Vutsudali da. Now, watch here, in the, in the Tanakh, you're going to see there's a Korean kativ, all right? It, in, the, the, the kativ says tseida with a hey, the Korean is tsayid, okay? Now, the Zohar actually bases its interpretation on the, tsay, on the, on the kativ here, which is interesting, all right? And uh, hunt for me the, the, the hunting. All right now, what it means with the hay is is apparently um, is 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 he's telling Asaph, I you need to prepare the vessels for the for the for the uh, purpose of creation. That hay represents. It's not. It says not these not lesser vessels, not the ones with which we use during the unfolding of creation, but the ones which are going to bring the whole purpose of creation to its finish. It's hinted at in that kativ there. Okay, let's say da. But I say matamin and make for me a uh, tasty <coughs> something. Kasher ahafti. Again, this is all you know, pliniot as well, which I love. The vialiva ochela, and I will bring it to me, and I will eat bavot vavechachan nafshi b'terem amut, so that my soul will bless you before I die. Mm. Now, again. Um, it's not that he needs to eat before he blesses, but there's, I don't know the meaning of why he had this eating, but he, but, but this, I can't remember, it's, it's written in the Zohan, I can't remember it, maybe it'll come up in the blessings, uh, in the blessings, Ma'am. Um, there is something there, I'm sorry, I've forgotten. In order that my soul will bless you before I die. Now, for Rivka Shomat, but Abay Yitzhakele Sabbano, and Rivka hears when Isaac is, is speaking to I, 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 Esau, his, his son. Rivka um, wasn't nearby. The Shekhinah told Rivka. The Zohar tells us very specifically the Shekhinah told Rivka. Okay? And we asked the question at the time, you know, um, since the Shekhinah was always with Yaakov, Yaakov the Shekhinah never left Yaakov, because Yaakov was always uh, one with the Shekhinah, the Shekhinah never left Yaakov. Why didn't you just tell? Why didn't the Shekhinah just tell Yaakov directly? Because Rivka has an important role. So, she, so the Shekhinah told Rivka, okay, told what? That that he told Rivka that Asaf uh, that Yitzchak has called Asaf, uh, okay, to 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 him so that he can give him the blessings, hmm. okay. Ve'elech Asaf hasadeh, and Asaf goes out to the field, Latsud side, Lavi, in order to hunt the, do the hunting of this great vessels, bring this light. Okay. Ve'rivka amor el Yaakov b'no, and Rivka says to Yaakov her son, Lemo, hinei shamati tavicha metabeh el Asaf archicha Lemo. I have heard, and Rivka says to Yaakov her son, saying, Look, I've heard uh, your father talking to Asaf, your brother, saying, Okay, 
bring me hunting and make for me uh, good food and I will eat and I will bless you before God before I die. Mm -hmm. um, and now my son, Shema B'koli, listen to my voice, to what I am commanding you. And take for me two good he goats. Okay? Now, this has got meaning. The Zaha says, why two he goats? What two he goats? I mean, an old man doesn't need two he goats to eat. Okay? It's because Rivka knew in her prophecy that the children of Yaakov will be offering up the uh, two goats uh, uh, for, for the Se'il mm Hashem -hmm. and Se'il Azazel on Yom Kippur. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is just beautiful. Okay, so she sees in her vision that, that one is for, for uh, Se'il Hashem and one is for Se'il Azazel. Okay, and if you remember, there, were two, uh, there was a, 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 a discussion in the Zohar whether we're talking about um, the two Korbanot on Pesach or the two Korbanot on, on Yom Kippur. And um, the two Korbanot on, on Pesach would have been the Pesach and the Hagigah. One, and they, everybody's agreed one is for the right-hand side, which is mm. represented by Yaakov, and one is for the left-hand side. One is for the order Hasadim, which is the one that Yaakov has, the joy of giving, the, vet, the light of giving. And one is for the order Hopma, <coughs> which is the light of the revelation of God. Okay? And basically, he pays your money, he takes your choice. Rabbi Yossi says it's, it's, it's Pesach, okay? <laughs> but I like the one of Rabbi uh, uh, Yehuda, okay? Because he says something very very precise which I think really speaks to me about this story which he says is the is is is, is, is the Se'il Hashem and the Se'il Azazel because the Se'il Azazel is exactly what happened with the lentil stew we give something to the Mekatreg to the Yetzirah on on Yom Kippur we send it away but that's enough to appease it so that we can handle it the rest of the year Okay, it calms down and it doesn't uh, 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 act as the accuser um, any longer. And this is, to me, is the same action that Yaakov, and also in the Zohar, it says the same action that Yaakov did when he gave Ace of the lentil stew. So that to me is very appealing. But why is, why is there even a discussion in the Zohar? Why is it not just clear which one it is? And there is a problem, and that problem is that Ace, that he, sorry, that Yitzhak et from this stew, from both goats. And that means he was able, he was such a high madrega that he was able to transform what will one day be sent away in the wilderness. We can't transform the Seir Lazazel. We can't do it. Well, we can do is send it away. But Yitzhak was able to transform it and eat it and bring it inside him in a you know, to can it. So he has totally transformed this, 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 uh, 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 this, uh, he's, I mean, he's totally reached the Gemati Kun in a way that, that, that we won't reach until Mashiach. I mean, Yitzhak really was the essence of Mashiach. He, he really had this huge Madriga. And so, you know, this is an extraordinary, extraordinary level that, he, that Yitzhak reached. Okay. Okay. Right. And... Here we go. And you bring it to your father and he will eat uh, so that he will bless you before his death. So that's what Rivka tells Yaakov to do. Um, and now we've got Yaakov. What's he going to do in this situation? What is he going to do? Okay? Most uncomfortable situation to be in. And this is what he feels. And Yaakov says to Rivka's mother, Look, Esav, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. Maybe my father will feel me, and it will be like in his eyes like a deceiver. And I brought upon me a curse and not a blessing. And his mother says to him, I like a love, 
My, your curse will be on me, my son. Akshamabakoli. But listen to my voice. Velech kachli. Go and take for me. Veyelech veyikach veyaveli imo. And he goes and he takes and he brings it to his mother. Batas imo mataamim kasher ahav avi. And then he, uh, uh, he goes and he takes and brings it to his mother, and his mother makes the tasty stew like his father loves. And Rivka takes these garments of Esav, her oldest son, Hachamudot. Okay, and we looked at that. What does the big day Hachamudot mean? These incredibly precious garments. And we looked at these garments, that these are the garments of Adama Rishon, they belong to Adama Rishon, okay? Okay, and the Zohar says at that moment when she gave them to Yaakov, she restored the lost object to its rightful place. Because Yaakov, from the moment of his inception, has the qualities of Adam Harishon. Hmm. Okay, and we're going to learn more about that. Yaakov has the qualities of Adam Harishon. His beauty, remember we looked at that last week, that his beauty of Yaakov was as the beauty of Adam Arishon. Mm. And he had the ability to subdue the, the snake aspect, okay? What, 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 what the, the blessings that the snake had taken from Adam Arishon when they ate from the tree of knowledge, Yaakov Avinu restored. This is a huge, huge, huge tikkun that Yaakov Avinu is doing, mm. okay? And what is he doing? And, and so the Ben Agadola Hamudot, he's with Rivka in this action of giving to 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 Yaakov the, the these garments of 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 of, of Esav's, uh, he's actually restoring the lost object to its true place. But not only that, the meaning of these garments is that when Yaakov goes into his father, he goes in, and this again going back to what Yochavid said that Yaakov is giving Ace of life. This is exactly the case, because, because Yaakov is going in not only as Yaakov, but as Ace of. Mm -hmm. So she's, he's taking Ace of in with him. The Zohar looks at this whole question, and he says a tremendous question. Why was it that the Shekhinah, which never left Yitzhak, why was it that the Shekhinah never told Yitzhak the evil deeds that 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 uh, Esau was doing. Why well, never? Why well, just tell him, hey, yes, don't give the person over that bit dangerous, you know. He all had to be told was, you know, just don't do it, and he wouldn't have done it. Wouldn't have occurred to him. Why was it that Yitzhak was left in the dark, not just physically, but in every other way? All right. It was because if he would have completely negated any blessing for 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 Esau, given to Yaakov, but that wasn't the will of God. But then what, ha what would happen with the Kaleem? Exactly, that wasn't the will of God. They'd be half, of the them wrong would, place. half of them would be, would, would, would be outside the blessing. Yeah. What would happen? Balance. God, yeah, God wanted the lot to be blessed. God wanted it, but not under the, uh, under the lordship of Esau, but under the lordship of Yaakov. That Yaakov needs to be the dominant. Why? Because Yaakov's way is the way of Chesed. Yaakov's way, the way of, of, of Yaakov, Yaakov has a capacity to join the vessels together. He's actually the middle line. Okay? We said that Avraham was Chesed, Yitzhak, Gevura. Yaakov brings through Tiferet, which is elements Balance. of both. It's, it's within them it both. Balance, yes, but not a mathematical balance, mm -hmm. okay? It's not a middle line between the two. Yaakov, the, the way of Tiferet is closer to the way of Abraham <coughs> than it is to the way of Yitzhak. Mm -hmm. But it takes the elements of Yitzhak and brings them in so that everything comes into Kedusha. And this was the function of Yaakov, to go in, but not just one-sided on just, just to receive the light of Chassadim, but to receive the light of Chochmah, but wrapped with the essence of Yaakov, which is the light of Chassadim, the light of giving, okay, wrapped in a kosher way, okay, 
all right and therefore to bring the blessings the gematikun in the correct way and this was the desire of the shekhinah and this is why the shekhinah never told yitzhak what esav was doing and it had to be this way and rivka understood and she understood and she helped direct events so that Yaakov went in not own, not as Yaakov, but as including the Kalim of Esau too. It's so very incredible. When you look at it like this, it's, we see the great work that Yaakov did. And you were right. Hmm. He's in a way saving Esau. He's saving. Yeah, otherwise Esau would have been left out totally. And Rivka took the garments of Esau, and the beged in, in the Pnimiot of the Torah is vessels, okay? Benah HaGadol, HaChamudot, which are the garments given by God to Adam Rishon, okay? With which to receive the great light. Asher Tababayit, which were with her in the home, Vatal Beshek Yaakov Benah Koton. And she dressed them, with Yaakov, her, her, her younger son, with them. And the skins from these sacrifices, okay? She dresses on his arms, okay? And on the portion of his neck. And she gives the tasty stew and the bread which she had made into the hand of Yaakov, her son. And he comes to his father, and he says to his father, And he says to him, Here I am, who are you, my son? And it's at this dramatic moment, okay, that we're going to learn the next piece of Zohar. All right? All right. How are we doing for time? Ten minutes left. Ten minutes. 20. Oh, heaven's bar. It's one twenty. Heaven's bar. So one twenty. We can't do this piece of Zohar in ten minutes. Not even. Not even us. Not even us. <laughs> we cannot do it in ten minutes. However, it's not a long piece. So we will give us the. You know, we'll we'll have a look at it. Kofulam and Vav. Ve'yitan l'cha Elohim yital ha'shamayim u'mishmane ha'aretz v'rov dagam t'yosh Amar Rabbi Abba Ha'ikra u'kmuha Aval ta'a chazi Shia ma'alot el ha'shem v'atzarat li karanti v'yaneni Kama shirin v'tushpachan Amar David Marka kamei kut shabrichu v'chula begin l'atkana dargei el me'embad le'i l'shma mod sh'ata omer ויעש דוד שם וישירת הדה, אמר כד חמה ובדה דה ליעקב. אמר רבי אבא, מקרא זה ברוך הוא. רבי אבא said, this scripture we have explained it. אבל בואו ראה, שיר המעלות, כאן הם לוק, שיר המעלות. Now the שיר המעלות he's talking about is on this page. Alright? I'm going to cut a long story short. Okay, I'm going to tell you. This is the psalm that Yaakov Avin said when he goes in to his father. Mm. All right? Mm. He was trying, he was... Mm. There, yeah. what one? There we go. Oh, sorry, sorry. I, 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 I Here they something. are. Sorry. 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 I need to, I need to I yeah, okay. Which psalm is it? First one, top of the No, I got that. Because there were a few more. Did you pass them the Cuff, 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 120. Okay. 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 All right. Cuff, cuff, 120. They were? No, no. Water. 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 No water. <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. all right. This is yours. Okay, so this is the psalm. I mean, you can imagine, he was in fear and trembling. He doesn't want to be a deceiver, and yet he knows he's got this job to do. 
and he doesn't know how well, what he's going to say, he doesn't know how anything's going to turn out. So what does anybody in, in that situation do? They govern. Look at your bag. What does anybody do in this situation? They govern. Okay? All right? And he says this psalm, which the Ruch HaKodesh, David and Melech, then goes and picks up, okay, so many years later. All right? Because, you know, David and Melech's also got Ruch HaKodesh. Sure. Okay. Shir HaMa'alot. El Adonai Batsarata Li Karati Vianeni. Adonai Hatsila Nafshi Misfat Sheke. Milashon Rimiya. Mayiten Lacha U Mayusif Lacha Lashon Rimiya. Hitsei Gibor Shnunim Im Gahaleo Tamim. Oya Li Kigati Meshech. Shahantim Oralei Kedar. Rabat Shahnala Nafshi. Am Sone Shalom. Ani Shalom. Vahia Dabe. Hema Lemilchama. A song of ascent. In my distress I called to the Lord, and he answered me. O oh Lord, deliver my soul from lying lips, from a deceitful tongue. What shall be given to you, and what shall be done more to you, your de you deceitful tongue? Sharp arrows of the mighty with coals of broom. Woe is me that I sojourn with Meshech, that I dwell beside the tents of Kedar. My soul has lo full long had her dwelling with him that hates peace. I am all peace, but when I speak, they are for war. Mm. Okay, so this is like, okay, this is this, this is the this is the psalm that uh, that that Yaakov Avinu says as he goes in to his father. Okay, and this is what the Zohar says. Come, I'm on the first paragraph. Okay, second column <coughs> on page fifty nine. How many songs and praises did David and Melech say to HaKadosh Baruch And everything was in order to rectify the level of the Malchut and to bring to it the light. As you say, Vayaz David shame, and David made a name. And he said this song, when he looks at in his inner sight and he looks at the deed of Yaakov. That is to say, when he saw that Yaakov was answered and received the blessings, he said this song, when I was in such distress, I called and he answered me. Vululei kibel Yaakov ha-brachot. And if Dave, uh, Yaakov had not received the brachot, shusud ha-mochin ha-shleimin le-binyan ha-nukva, which was the tremendous light, the whole light, for building of the, of the malchut, okay, which we're going to see how that works out in the blessing section, okay. Lo haya David yachol asot lo David could not have done the, the work that he did. So, so Yaakov's work paves the way for David HaMelech's work. Mm. All right? Mm. Rabbi Elazar Amar, Rabbi Elazar says, Yaakov Amar Shira Zo, B'Shash Amar Lo Aviv, G'Shan Aba Mushcha B'Ni, Rome. Rabbi Elazar says, and this was in his perception how he saw it, Yaakov, Yaakov said this song, well, at the moment when his father said to him, draw near and I'll feel you, my son. Haya as Yaakov Gdola. Yaakov then was in tremendous distress. Shayami Tereshi Aviv Yedalto. He was afraid his father will know him. Venechalifanav. Or not know him. You know, and he'll be like a stranger to him. I mean, is he Yaakov? Is he Yesa? Oh, yeah. I can imagine what he's feeling. Makatu Velohi Kiro. And he didn't recognize him. As a mile, eh, as a mile, Hashem. And he says to God, but Saratali, when I was in distress, Karati Vaneni, I called and he answered me. Hashem had sila nafshi misfat sheker. God save me from the language of, of, of falsehood. 
Zohi and Madagasha Esav Nitzaba. That's the level that the Esav was situated in. The Hainu Hanachash was the level of the snake. Shusfat Sheker, which is the level of deceit, which is the language of deceit. Mahusfat Sheker Shabamadwegato, just as it was the language of, of deceit in, at his level, who Kibashash and Nachashivi Kalot Shnit Kahel Shnit Kalel Be Maulam. For this was the moment when the snake brought the curses with which the, the world was cursed. That is when he enticed to sin from the tree of knowledge. It was with deceit and with the uh, crookedness that the snake brought the curses with which the world was cursed. And now... Yaakov Avinu is coming to restore the lost object to its true place. Okay, so you can imagine, you know, so this, this psalm is absolutely, and we're going to go into the psalm more depth in the following lessons, okay, as it's, it's we get more of it, in the, you know, it goes into which each bit means as we go along. Hefa, that was amazing. Yeah. I'm so you glad are. you were here. You're amazing. You're Shikawa yeah. Kadol. You're all with, you know, all, you're all hanging in there and I'm proud of you all. You. And for Hanukkah, I know it's a song for um, uh, um, Motsi Shabbos, but it's the song of Yaakov. All the beauty and wonderfulness <laughs> of Yaakov. Okay, so anybody who knows it can join in and anybody who doesn't can learn it. <laughs>